Let's, uh, we're going to touch on Brazil. Fernando Haddad is in New York uh, now uh, and will be at the, I think, at the conference of progressive leaders that Bernie Sanders is organizing up in Vermont this weekend. And this is happening at a fast clip. Lula da Silva still uh, imprisoned, uh, and they've also uh, some uh, 22 people in Lava Jato related charges uh, have been released from prison, uh, even as he's still sitting there, obviously. Uh, let's pivot back to him in a minute. But first, I want to really distill what's happening here. You have a foreign minister who has been appointed in the incoming Bolsonaro government who has called uh, global warming a cultural Marxist plot. You have a new created ministry of citizenship uh, headed by an evangelical who has claimed that black Brazilians are from some type of satanic tribe, I believe. You've heard all sorts of comments about uh, from Bolsonaro's son saying they got rid of the communists in Indonesia. We could do that here. That's, of course, a campaign of mass government mafia U.S.-backed murder in the 1960s and 70s. And the Trump administration and John Bolton specifically, of course, could not be more excited to have a new circle of far-right governments that mirror Pinochet in the 70s in terms of giving their country away to Anglo multinationals, uh, Amazon be to be totally destroyed, public access uh, resources to be stripped, austerity, destroying unions, everything that uh, capital wants, along with uh, neo-fascist authoritarianism. This is John Bolton greeting Bolsonaro here uh, in Brazil. And just, I, I have to say, actually, think of this. In today's world, we do have national borders. We do have national pride. It's not all at all a negative thing, frankly. And I have to say, if you're Brazilian, regardless of where you are in your politics, aren't you embarrassed by this feeble, pathetic display from Bolsonaro, not even to a fellow head of state? This is a fucking national security advisor. Mr. President, are you sir? Very nice to see you. Look at this. He's saluting John Bolton. Very nice to see you. Because he knows that Bolton's his new boss. Sure, not saying, like, look at that fucking idiot coming look at, at me out of this SUV. <laughs> <laughs> catering there catering he's showing him around he's treating him like a guest of highest honor and look Todd uh, was lame the nationalist international there's no doubt and I think that look I mean, obviously, it's no surprise, and it's important, of course, to always note the Wall Street Journal endorsed this. Uh, the Brazilian oligarchic elite, neoliberalism will break fascist when pushed to the brink. And the Canadian uh, Broadcasting Corporation, which tweeted out after Bolsonaro won, like, hey, he says some bad stuff, but this can be great for Canadian companies. We need to be on this in every way, shape, and form. People like Bernie Sanders have already spoken out on Bolsonaro. They've already spoken out on Lula da Silva as a political prisoner. But people need to do a lot more. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez needs to be on this. Uh, Rashida Tlaib needs to be on this. Any self-respecting Democrat needs to be in on this. And this is an interview from a couple of days ago. Noam Chomsky visited Lula da Silva in prison before the elections and rightly called him the most important political prisoner in the world today and noted his stamina and his energy. Uh, in the context of his confinement. People ask me from time to time why Lula matters to me so much. And I've done a lot more coverage on him, particularly on TMBS. But let me just say, look, again, tens of millions lifted out of poverty. A policy that tried to strike a balance with positive relations everywhere from Iran to the United States and wanted positive relations with the United States, but as an example, refused to privatize all of Brazil's oil, refused to totally give away the store to Western corporations and U.S. foreign policy, which is obviously what Bolsonaro and the bankers and the petrochemical companies and uh, the foreign policy elite of both parties wants. Lula 
uh, had enormous social progress in terms of Afro-Brazilians, in terms of uh, women in positions of leadership and so on, uh, and also even in terms of some environmental policies with the Amazon. He is the most successful leader of the 21st century so far. And it's also a lesson about what capital will do and the just hatred that the elites have for someone that came from poverty and was a metal worker and was better than they are. And his treatment is a obscenity. He's an incredibly important political prisoner and a hugely accomplished person. And we should all honor that. This is Noam Chomsky explaining it to Amy Goodman. Talk about who exactly Bolsonaro is. Are you afraid that the country will descend into a military dictatorship? And where Lula stands in all this today? Well, let's start with uh, Lula. There has been a, a, a long, slow, uh, right-wing, uh, what's often called soft coup. Uh, one step was uh, impeaching the president, Dilma Rousseff, 2013. She was impeached on derisory charges by a parliament of uh, thieves. Uh, most, uh, the dr most dramatic vote for impeachment was, in fact, Bolsonaro's. Uh, he, when he voted for impeachment, he dedicated his vote to the chief torturer of the military regime, who, in fact, had been the responsible for the torture of uh, Dilma Rousseff herself. So that was his uh, dedication when he voted for the uh, ridiculous impeachment. It's a, it's a competitor for one of his most vile mo moments. There's plenty of competition. Uh, the next step was to ensure that uh, Lula would be uh, put out of commission. He was far and away the most popular political figure in Brazil, so in order to carry off the right-wing soft coup, it's necessary to get rid of him. Uh, he was sent to uh, prison for uh, 12 years, virtually a life sentence, uh, solitary confinement, uh, barred from uh, receiving uh, books, press, or journals, and crucially, the courts decided not permitted to make a public statement unlike, say, a, a convicted murderer. So he's silenced, uh, put away. Uh, uh, then comes the next step, a huge, there has been a major, uh, in fact, I think he should be regarded as uh, probably the most important political prisoner in the world today. A hundred percent, and we need to stay on this. And the political imprisonment of Lula is connected with what you will see now, which is a full spectrum effort to criminalize the quote-unquote left in Brazil, which is essentially being determined uh, as the 40 million people that voted for Hernando, Fernando Haddad or didn't vote for Bolsonaro. And that includes bills to uh, ban certain uh, areas in the curriculum. It, it includes bills to ban protest. And Steve Bannon and U.S. foreign policymakers have supported this in Brazil. The Obama administration was complicit in the soft coup against Dilma. And this stuff is going to come back to us at home. If you look at polls, Republicans voters are in love with Jair Bolsonaro to the extent they know who he is. We live in a globally synchronized time, and you can't think of these things as in isolation from one another. So care for Brazil, have solidarity with Brazil and with Lula, but also see that this could be migrating right back here. What do you think it signifies that uh, Haddad's coming up here to meet with Bernie and not Obama? Says a whole hell of a lot, doesn't it? And it also, yeah. by the way, it says a hell of a lot too, that even, like in the European context, former heads of state that are Obama's equivalent have all signed, like moderate, Zapatero, Hollande, Schultz, like they've all called for the freeing of Lula. This is like an absolutely, as well as, of course, the leaders of Podemos just went to visit Lula. But in Europe, this is even the centrists are supportive of this. Like this is not controversial. And Barack Obama used to love Lula. He called him my guy and the most popular politician on earth when they first uh, were spending time together. So, well. 
it's a it's atrocious obama should be speaking up on lula absolutely i i would only add that it really shows the limits of uh bourgeois democracy and ele what? and electoral politics in um just bringing about not even socialism but social democracy for everyone to have a decent life like there is a fundamental check on the power of electoral politics when the oligarchs and those with economic power can decide at any minute no we're actually going to take a democratically elected politician and put them in jail so people need to be doing other things as well outside of the electoral system that uh, have the power to oppose the power of these forces. I think that's true. And it was definitely what was historically possible when Lula was in office even, and Dilma was very different. And there's also like, yes, but the broader point is, is that even, even you need to disarm the enemy so they can't come back on you. And even in a social democratic context, the deals that they had to make, like leaving the media monopolies in power, like not dealing with those power structures, definitely allowed for this counterforce. You know, Corey Robin had no doubt. had an interesting post on Facebook a month or so ago about how the left, you know, very opposed to Citizens United and this conflation of money equals speech, right? Right. But if we just, if, if thought experiment, we accept that, and we understand that, like, well, actually, when you allow people to have a bunch of private wealth, that serves as, like, a bunch of extra votes they just get to have, right? Right. And that's, th I think, thinking about that more and, and fleshing that contradiction out a bit more and that maybe we just lean into this, like, say, like, fine, money's going to be speech. Like, I, I don't know how exactly we, what exactly this means, like, long-term strategically, mm -hmm. but I thought it was an interesting sort of, principle to think about to like because it because sort of by your own logic them to like what they're saying about the nature of how voting works not not necessarily to score points in a debate but i no, mean I like i mean like legislatively right like well if money is speech then we should do something to level the playing field about speech because if if certain speech if speech right. if if, we, if speech is all of a sudden on a market then somebody having more money equals them having more speech which means that uh, everybody else's speech is devalued, right. right? Which means that speech, like, literally is cost prohibitive at a certain point. Well, yeah, right. it goes back to using libertarians' arguments against them because if they really care about freedom of speech, they would care that rich people have more freedom of speech than people without money. And obviously, almost none of them do care about that, but exactly, right.